YouTube Oz it going the go Dows is back with a brand new series that I'm excited for. We're starting with the San Francisco 49ers. We will do every single NFL team. Each team will get their own video. Make sure you comment on these videos with your favorite team because team with the most comments will be the next video. Uh, but what we're going over, the biggest things you should watch, in my opinion, biggest storylines, questions, uh, intriguing players to watch, not necessarily the best players, games to watch, and then some of these videos will have a fan's take from our X slash Twitter subscribers, so subscribe on there if you want to play along. But uh, the biggest things I think you should watch for, the whole football world should watch for, is uh, for the 49ers, number three, is watch for another step up from Brock Purdy and what if it happens. If it happens, I mean, it's downright scary. Like, this could be the team, the team, because in the past, whenever the Niners have been good for so long, it feels like now, but they just cannot win the Super Bowl. They either go there or come up just short. Um, you know, some years they had durability concerns, but in the past, whenever they would slip up in those big, big games, it felt like it was because the lack of quarterback play. There never really was bad quarterback play, like Jimmy Garoppolo played fairly well but just not enough in the quarterback position because the rest of the team was just flawless. It felt like great. And that was not the case this year. And I think people kind of don't realize that this year, the whole roster, the whole team was good. It's why they were the best team in the NFC. But whenever they were slipping up, it didn't really feel like Brock Purdy. There was a little get like the, maybe the Vikings game in the middle of the season. Like those games were pretty slipped up a little bit, but I'm talking about down the stretch in the biggest games, the playoffs. Um, it was actually other things. I thought Brock Purdy was keeping him in the games, winning games. He was really improving all not, not just heading into this past season, but throughout the entire season. Um, and he impressed me very much. I think he could be a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. I think he, he is right now, actually. But imagine if he takes another step, which I don't think people are talking about that enough. Like, it's very, very, very realistic for him to take another step. He's young. He doesn't have a ton of experience, but a good amount of experience to obviously play well. Um, so if he, just imagine that. If he takes another step up. So that's a big thing I'm watching for right there. Number two on this list is going to be... Uh, do they mix? I'd watch out for them to mix up coverages or give different looks than they have in the past. And then, but I guess it could be a question. You know, some of these are questions like, what are they going to run more of? Uh, you know, what's the plan? Because they've been a zone defense for so long. It feels like, especially under D'Amico Ryan's. Um, you know, and then they had Steve Wilkes last year. Now they have Sorensen. But um, yeah, they were they were very, very much primarily a zone defense under D'Amico Ryans. And when Steve Wilkes came in, they were actually running some man coverage early last year. Um, and that kind of, I, I, I go to where they got that, when that, when that little bit of a losing streak happened, uh, starting with the Vikings game, that's when the man kind of, the man coverage kind of got exposed a little bit. And they're like, yeah, maybe we're doing, we're a little too predictable when we do this. And then they end up running and they were running zone with that. They weren't running only man, but then they ran a lot more zone, a lot of cover three, uh, a lot of quarters as well. Uh, and then they had some moments, um, you know, because the Super Bowl where they all out blitz, like they were in cover zero and, and maybe a reason Wilkes got fired because those decisions were questionable. Um, so you think what you would think what this D and they bring an in-house guy, a guy that's been an assistant coach for the San Francisco 49ers for some time, you know, Salah's defense to be Ryan's defense, all zone defenses. Uh, you know, so you think kind of go back to what you do best and, and run, uh, you know, you, you, you're the, the 49ers zone coverage, but then they go ahead and draft Renardo green from Florida state, which makes things very interesting because that was a pure man coverage corner. Uh, the question was, can he run zone? Like if, if only man coverage existed, that guy would have been a first round pick easily because he was so good at man, in man coverage. But the NFL is primarily zone. Zone is, I think, what wins championships, but you have to be able to mix up your coverage. You can't stick in one thing. So I'm very curious. I'm imagining they're going to mix it up. I think they'll have a rotation at corner. Ward's going to play at all times as long as he's healthy, obviously. Um, so that is something intriguing. Could they throw other teams off? Uh, because of that, could it be a little bit of a new look again? Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. And then number one, things to watch for me, things that you should watch is how they utilize the slot receiver position and then how they use the re the receiver rotation because they now have a pretty good good list of receivers. But then there is a big offseason question still, I guess we could have put up here, is, is will the receivers on the team right now, will it be the same going into the season? They just signed Juwan Jennings. They already drafted two receivers. It's like, and there's been rumors about Ayuk and or Debo 
it does this mean one of these guys could be dealt at any given time? So that's something to watch as well. I was kind of focusing more on the, like come, going forward, like the season. Uh, but that that's something big. But I've talked about this a bunch since they drafted Ricky Pearsall. Them drafting Ricky Pearsall was bigger than them just drafting Ricky Pearsall. Was bigger than them just drafting a receiver. And I've talked about it. Probably, probably sound like a broken record for some of you at this point. But they really haven't had key, like consistent, big time production from a, from their receivers in the slot. Like they lined up there. They've got catches there. Kittle's done some work there. He's a tight end. Um, but they, it's how good this team's been. Um, you know, think about the slot receivers that are taking over. Some of these receivers that play slot and play outside, when they go in a slot, it's just dominant. Like some of the best receivers in the NFL. The Niners have not taken advantage of that. And they add a – Ricky Pearsall was a big-time slot receiver in the draft. And they – everyone liked him, but according to most people, they reached on a little bit, but it tells me they had to have – not him. They had to oh, – they had to have him. But they had to have this big-time true slot receiver that has pretty good size for a slot receiver, great hands. Um, so that is telling me they're adding, a, I would think, a little bit of extra, a little bit of flavor to that offense. So I am, and Jacob Cowing, who is a sneaky good pick, re- really athletic, really quick, uh, you know, finds lanes after the catch. That is a slot receiver. So they are taking that position, which people don't realize is a different, it's a different position. It's a receiver, but it's a different position, different skill sets, actually. Uh, for the most part, but uh, they've added, they've added to that. They have a plan and now they're deeper at receiver. So I am very much intrigued. Maybe why they keep getting stopped up short. Maybe they're getting a little predictable. We got to add a little bit, got to add a little bit more, a little bit of a different, you know, flavor to this offense. So, and then maybe with the coverages for defense as well. So that is something big to watch. Uh, Let's go over the players. If I had to pick three most intriguing players that I'm watching, I think some people would do this exercise and they would just pick the best players. I think I have to put Brandon Ayuk on this list. Um, and he is one of their better players, but I'm, I'm looking at the most intriguing, but I think I have to put him on this list because is he going to be on the team? I, I still think so, but is there an extension? Is he playing for a big contract? Is he playing his last year at San Francisco 49ers? Is he going to, yeah, is he going to play? Because he stepped up last year. He was already good, but he stepped up even more. Uh, most would say he was probably the most consistent separator in football last year. He was clutch for them anywhere on the field, any any level of the field. Um, was big for them down the stretch as well. Uh, is he happy there? Is it going to affect his play? Uh, is he again? Is he playing his last year? Is he going to play out of his mind where he gets an insane contract? I could see it. I could see it. So have to put him on the list. We'll see if he's even on the team. But he's number three on this list. Number two is Telenoa Hafunga, who they've missed for mo- you know almost all of last year. Their safety, who was all pro the year before, and now it is another d- different defensive coordinator. He broke out that last year under D'Amico Ryan, who's a great defensive coordinator, gets the most out of his players. He broke out, big-time playmaker. He can cover, he can play in the box, he can do anything. He looked like one to watch for the future. Uh, then D'Amico Ryan's left, and it's like, you know, is he going to be used the same? Because he's used in such a unique way. And then he got injured out for the year and they had some other guys step up, but it did feel like they were missing him. But a lot of defense, a most important thing on D, a most important thing in football and offense is the quarterback. Um, you know, and then, then on offense, I'd say it's offense line and the play caller are right there right after. For defense, number one, people will argue with it. I'm going to disagree all day. Number one is the defensive coaching. Uh, how they prepare, and then defensive play calling, and then edge uh, pass rush, I should say, will be next. But uh, and stopping the run is up there. But so will Afunga be that All Pro guy with now the third defensive coordinator in the last three years? Uh, will they use him the right way? What's the plan for them? Uh, Jair Brown stepped up last year. How much will he be used? Will they use both? Um, so it's pretty interesting here. This is a really he has the talent in him. Like it, D'Amico Ryan's didn't make the talent like the talent is in him but do they get it out of him how do they use him it's gonna be very very intriguing and uh it's a little maybe maybe didn't expect or probably not gonna go at rookies for every team uh but i'm gonna go one here and we talked about it a little bit in the last part of this video uh the most recent part of this video ricky pearsall uh he's not up here because he's a rookie there, i know a lot of fans out there want to talk rookies the rookies are the most intriguing talking points that's not why he's up here we kind of touched on why he's up here it brings a whole different look a different flavor 
uh, more adds more to the playbook for the San Francisco 49ers, and that could be scary. That could be really good for throwing teams off and having kind of a backup plan or an extra game plan that you can throw at teams depending on the opposing defensive strength and weaknesses. But they haven't had consistent dominance from the slot receiver position they have had dominant receivers but they haven't had that true slot receiver that can go to work from there like every single time they're on the field uh, they're lining up there and they uh, they had to have this guy who's a big time slot receiver in the draft reminds me a ton of Adam Thielen a ton of Adam the way he moves uh the size the hands uh, you know the high motor so that it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's a player. It's it's bigger than the player with, with Ricky Pearsall. It's just what are they bringing to this offense? And I decided to add uh, in, in this video uh, three favorite games to watch, and they have a lot of interesting games. But some obvious ones here: the Super Bowl, a lot of rematches. Uh, Super Bowl rematch in Week Seven. It's gonna be home against the Chiefs. Uh, you know, so th- you know that's gonna be it. What I actually my favorite part about that is kind of it's somewhat in the range of where they struggled. The 49ers struggled a little bit last year, and you're gonna play the best team in football, the team that just beat you in the Super Bowl. Um, you know, and, and they got added a little bit more. You know, they add some speedy receivers. So how will the 49ers adapt to that? How will the Chiefs adapt to the Niners kind of learning from the last time they played them, which was recent, uh, and changing things at Packers in Week 12? I thought the Packers outplayed them in, in that. Uh, divisional round game, uh, and, but the 49ers end up clutching up and winning that game. The Packers, I, I think, are going to get better and better. I think it's actually a heavyweight in the NFC along with the Niners, Lions, and other teams, a couple other teams. But uh, in Green Bay, it's a tough place to play, especially in Week 12. That's going to be a lot of fun. In the NFC Championship rematch, the Niners got completely outplayed by the Lions in the first half. They completely outplayed the Lions in the second half. It resulted in that big-time comeback win to go to the Super Bowl. So Lions are going to be out for revenge. Uh, do we see a... a, a um, what do we see? Do we see the first like if the first half went out played out the whole game, the Lions would just destroy them. If the if the second half played out the whole game, the Niners were. So what are we going to see? What are we going to see in that game? Uh, and that's Week 17. That could actually decide a seating. I think the Lions and the Packers will have a battle in the NFC North, but um, that a game like that could decide who wins the NFC North, and it could decide the seating between the Niners and whoever that NFC North team is, and specifically looking at the Lions who they play. Um, so that. Not they're more than just rematches here. Um, I thought the Packers was the worst matchup actually for them. It looked like uh, out of the three, I thought the Packers played the Niners better than any of the three teams, and and the Niners beat the Packers. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's pretty crazy. So uh, interesting, interesting games to watch. And then I had our, I asked our ex subscribers, uh, paid subscribers to play along. And then we got one here for the 49ers. Like, so if you subscribe to us, comment, I made a post, uh, just g- give me what you're interesting to see, what you're interested to see, what people should watch, things like that. Um, and then Anthony Kramer has some similarities to what I had. He knows what he's talking about. He's the reason why he's, uh, the only so far goat house hall of famer. Uh, but he has, uh, yeah, first one's good. First one is what, something I did not have. Defense, how the defense is going to manage without Greenlaw. Remember, Greenlaw had that fluke, fluke injury that was devastating um, coming off the sideline in the Super Bowl. Uh, but how, how are they going to manage without Greenlaw for a significant amount, at least a significant amount of season? That's, that's a good take. It's a good point. Because um, they, they, I could have put Devondre Campbell, they added, I could have put him in, in the the three most intriguing players to watch because that he two years ago he was insane for the Packers. Last year took a step down. All the, all the defensive players for the most part were underwhelming for the Packers. But that's a good linebacker. So him coming in with you know playing next to Fred Warner, like are they gonna get the most out of him? Are they gonna miss Greenlaw? Like it's gonna be pretty important how how Campbell plays. What happens if what happen yeah, I'm thinking of more and more stuff here because because Ants are not here. Um what if Campbell plays pretty well I say if he plays lights out, he plays great, like high, high, high level. He's not going to get replaced. But if he plays pretty well, Niners are doing good. You get to the playoffs or important games. Greenlaw's back. You, you throw Campbell on the bench. Get you know he gets some snaps still. You put Greenlaw in. Very, very interesting. Uh, another one. He he had some of the similar ones as me here. We're on the same page. Difference in coverages from the defense with the new DC and drafting Green. Yeah, very, very interesting. Um, because they've been a zone defense for so long, and I Wilkes tried to sneak in some man. It kind of backfired a little bit. 
Um, they have guys that are very capable. I, I, you know, Ward could play about anything. He played a lot of man when he was in Kansas City. He has the speed, the length to to, to play with receivers and man. Um, but yeah, it's it's like, drafting Renardo Green makes us think about that because that that guy like it, it, I, I can't imagine he's starting as a rookie in a, a heavy zone defense. I can't imagine that, and that's why some people probably had their, had him on uh, on their board early second. Some people probably had him like fourth, fifth round because it's like there's probably teams that didn't have him on their their board at all. Actually, believe it or not, I actually 100 percent believe that it's got to be 100 percent fact because if they're heavy, heavy, heavy zone teams like the heaviest zone teams in football. Um, they're just they don't really want to deal with that. They want a guy that can that knows zone and he can play well in zone. So it, it's going to be interesting and how they rotate all the offensive weapons uh, to their benefit or does it hurt? Yeah, does, does I guess it's a good point as well. Does it hurt them because well, first off, is Ayuk or Debo? I'd imagine they're there, mainly looking at Ayuk. But are they in or out? Like if they lose one of those guys, even though they added some good slot receivers, it kind of feels like they take they take a step down. Um, but trying to add more that's really not part of Shanahan's game, does that hurt them? I don't think so, but these are good questions. Um, you know, how they rotate those those receivers. Like what's the first time they step on the field, like who what's it gonna look like? It's just gonna be Debo Ayuk and then Kittle in there. Um because they have McCaffrey and use check in the backfield, or do they not have use check? Do they have is it gonna be, you know, they got Ricky starting in the slot? It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting and then they got another big time slot receiver, big time college slot receiver, and Jacob Cowan. You know, so how do they mix these guys in? Jawan Jennings, they, who they just gave a new deal to, he's one of the more underrated players in football. He like, he, he's a, he's a very important piece to that, more of a factor than you think. He was, you know, he might have won Super Bowl MVP if they won that game, and he blocks very well. So yeah, it's interesting, very, very interesting stuff. So if you're playing along. Uh, if you're an ex-subscriber to us, not just a follower, but a subscriber, um, you, you click on that subs tab and you can kind of play along there. Uh, but yeah, it could be, you, you saw the first video. It could be anything like like Antron has, or if you want to throw players or uh, questions, things that you know that other people should watch that not being talked about enough. Anything like that. I'm always intrigued. It, it kind of brings up more discussions for myself like it happened here um, from Anthony Kramer. So um, excited about the series. I, I'm, I'm really excited about it. This was a lot of fun. That's only one down. Um, but make sure you comment your favorite team. I want to do a, a team that uh, you know people are commenting next. Uh, I try to work on them ahead of time a little bit, so uh, I'm not going to wait to the last second to look at the comments, but we'll see what starts uh, building up here. But we will get to every single NFL team. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you uh Check out those links pinned in the comments. Our Twitter, our sponsors, GLD Shop, uh, Liquid IV, code GOAT. Uh, I actually have the Niners chain on from the GLD Shop. You want something like that? Code GOAT on the GLD Shop. Back to the end screen. There we go. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Let me know your guys' thoughts. If you want me to tweak this, what, what you know, thoughts on this new series. But thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>